Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I take you step by step going from a set of plans like this for the Pronto 3-channel RC model airplane to this. Let's get to it. In this video, as in all my videos, there are chapters just hover over the timeline below. They're also described in the, in the description if you'd like to jump ahead to a specific section or review a particular chapter, it's very easy to do. The Pronto is a 1972 design by Dave Roblin. It was published in Model Airplane News. He kitted it for a while and it was a popular kind of sport trainer airplane, low wing, fair amount of dihedral and, and um, three channels. So what I've decided to do is I've got a full-size set of plans for this airplane. I'll show you exactly how to get that on the web. There's another set you can download from the description. And we're going to build this airplane again, but we're going to make some changes just because there have been changes since the gas-powered model first flew in 1972 to what we would fly today. This is being filmed in 2022. Of course, we'll be using electrical power. So let's take a few minutes to go through the process of that. So the first step in building a plans built airplane, you have to have a set of plans. I have a downloadable set of plans in the description. You can take that if you have a method of enlarging it. I do have a video showing how to enlarge plans at a FedEx store. I'll put that in the description. What I did, what you might want to do, because all of these um, model airplanes are built from full-size plans, you can order them in various places. I did a Google search for the Pronto with model airplane news. There's a store they have called Air Raid Store. Um, let's go take a look right now how you can order this full-size set of plans from the Air Raid Store. All right, so we have the full set of plans here, and what we have to do, the, the overall view of what we're going to do to make the model is we're going to study the plans so that we understand how the plane is built. This is a good, it's actually, it's a great airplane to build for a first airplane from plans. It's practically all straight lines. There's not too many curves. There's no strange things about the construction. It's very straightforward construction. It'll be a, a great starting point for it. But we need to understand um, the process. So what we're going to do is we're going to study the plans, make sure we understand it. Once we study the plans, we're going to create a bill of materials. In other words, how much balsa, plywood, music wire, wheels, etc. we need to build the airplane. I'll show you how to create a bill of, bill of materials. And also the bill of materials is in the description. You don't have to create one. I've done it for you. This is if you build it from plans on your own. Once we've done that, we simply cut out the individual parts needed for the plane. In other words, we're going to create our own kit of the airplane. Once the parts are cut out, we have a kit, we're going to build the airplane. I'll take you step by step how we're going to do that. Now, the first thing on this set of plans is, as we've studied it, is we understand that the plans were drawn 50 years ago. Everybody flew gas-powered airplanes back then. There were virtually no electric-powered airplanes in 1972. This used a little uh, 0.15 to 2.3 engine, very popular, easy to handle gas engine. But the takeaway is the gas-powered planes back then were very heavy because the, plane, the gas motors create a lot of um, vibration. With the maple motor mounts, the vibration, the weight of the motor, it, you just had a heavier airplane. The weight on this Pronto uh, when you look down here, it's two and a half pounds. That is a heavy airplane. But if you go back in time to 1972, all the planes are very he fairly heavy. They flew fast. That's just the way things were. We're going to convert this to electric powered flight. And I estimate the weight will be no more than one and a half pounds. You can use any electric motor you want that is good for a plane of about one and a half pounds. And I plan on using a three cell LiPo. But with the less vibration, 
there's going to be a lot less structure needed. We'll just cut some of that out as we make changes to the to, to this design for our um, electric version of the, of the Pronto. So taking a look at the wing, it's just a absolutely normal rectangular wing. Uh, Dave, the original designer, used a dowel for the leading edge. That was popular at the time. I'm going to use a one quarter inch square balsa for the leading edge. I think that'll just be easier. Again, with the theme of having an extremely strong, heavy airplane, he used spruce for the top spar. I'm going to use one quarter square balsa for both the top and bottom spars. He has one eighth inch balsa for the wing ribs. That's a lot of balsa. I may have one eighth inch for the uh, inner ones where it connects up to the fuselage. Outside, I think I'll just use one sixteenth inch balsa. And the shape trailing edge will be, will be fine. There's no problem with that. So that's the main thing looking at the um, wing. Now, one thing you'll notice is he has three and a half inches dihedral on each side of the wing. That is a ton of dihedral. The reason he had the designer had to do that was he had a three-channel radio, a uh, three-channel setup with throttle for the gas motor, elevator, and rudder. He did not have ailerons, uh, so the dihedral had to take into account that there, there was no ailerons. That was a pretty common thing to do back then. The reason they didn't have ailerons were the aileron servos were expensive, or servos were expensive. They were big and heavy. There's just not enough room in this smaller model to have the additional servo for the aileron. So Dave elected not to do that. Today, servos are cheap, very small. We will have wing-mounted servos, uh, one on each wing for the ailerons. And I'm just going to make simple strip ailerons for this model. So we'll have a full four-channel model. What that means is we're going to have a lot less dihedral. I'd anticipate maybe one inch on each side for the dihedral. Now, going to the fuselage, as I mentioned, is a lot of structure here. He's got doublers in here. This is a 3 16th inch balsa on the side. We don't need that much for the electric. I'm going to have 1 8th inch balsa on the sides here. That's all I need. I'm always concerned with the length of the tail here, that it's going to be a tail heavy model. So what I'm going to do is probably extend the nose maybe half an inch or an inch to have more um, the motor further forward to help balance it out with the need of additional um, weight. Obviously no gas engine will put in the electric motor, firewall as required for whatever motor I decide to use, no need for a fuel tank. We're also going to have to put a hatch in the fuselage to remove the batteries between flights. There's no need for a hatch in these gas-powered models. You would plug in a battery to power the electronics at the beginning of your flying day. You would leave it in. You, could, you would have access through the wing. We're going to have to have a hatch. Because of the landing gear mounting and um, the fact that it's a kind of domed top, I've decided to put the hatch on the side here. I think that'll work out okay. Also, the landing gear, he has mounted it to the bottom. That's fine to do that. I think because the battery is going to go in here, I'm going to keep the landing gear straight up and just have a vertical bulkhead mounting by um, uh, F2 right there. All important balance point, that's really the center of gravity. It's fine to see that. I'll keep the dowels for rubber band mounted wings. Uh, normal uh, hatch here, uh, excuse me, um, uh, combing for the cockpit, we'll leave that. The tail fins are 3 6 inch balsa. That is very thick, heavy balsa. Okay for the gas-powered model. I'll use 1 8 inch uh, balsa for uh, mine. Zion has 1 8 inch wire landing gear. I may keep that. I may go down to 3 30 seconds. We'll see how, how, what the weight of the model comes out at. So that's an overview of the plans. Those are some things that are going through my head uh, before I build it. Again, a very straightforward build. I may make some more changes, but I think that's okay for now. So let's take a quick look at how we do the bill of materials to get the materials for this. And what you do is you just kind of mentally build the airplane um, in your head. So we'll just start with the wing. I said we're going to use 3 quarters inch uh, balsa for the leading edge. It's a uh, 24 inches per side of 48 inch wingspan. I know 1 quarter inch balsa comes in 48 inch lengths, so we need one one, one, one quarter square inch balsa for the leading edge and then two more, one for the upper spar and lower spar, so for three of those one quarter inch square uh, balsa sticks. 
for the ribs when you measure out the rib right here it's approximately an inch deep and seven inches long so you can put three of those on top for a three inch wide sheet of balsa um, seven inches times four would be 28 or 36 inch sheet with three on top you should get about 12 ribs per sheet so maybe order two to three sheets of the 1 16th inch or 1 8 inch balsa and you just add up all the things needed your tail surfaces the fuselage of sides it's three inches deep right here so that's convenient for a three inch um, sheet of balsa you just tally all that together and you'll get the bill of materials that I've done in the um, description when I order online I'll get a couple extra sheets from time to time just in case one comes out really hard I'll put in the remarks uh, light lightest balsa as possible and uh, see what you get from that so let's take a minute and I'll show you how I use for this model Balsa USA uh, website for ordering the Balsa. This is the Balsa USA website. They make some incredible kits in World War I aircraft. And they have a good supply of Balsa. It's the name Balsa USA. Just navigate the website. You'll find for sheet Balsa the various sizes. And it's, it's pretty self-evident how to go through it. And then we can also do the same for the sticks. There's a wide range of sizes, lengths. Again, navigate through the menus, get to that section, find the type of stick you like, add it to the cart, and it just comes to you in the mail. One other thing that I want to um, do on this, and it's not on the plans, is you notice the ribs are pretty far apart. I'm going to do what I call false ribs or half ribs. I'm going to take just the rib, the, the forward two inches, put from the leading edge, to the spar and I'll put these half ribs all along here. It'll help with the iron-on covering that I'm going to use to, to give the airfoil shape to the um, to the wing. So that, that'll add minimum weight and that'll be okay. The other thing with the plans, these are a big set of plans. They're kind of hard to move around on the, um, on the work table. Notice the plans are printed on one side. What I intend to do is cut the plan so I have a wing plan top view side view just make it easier to handle the plans as i build the model so at this stage we understand the plans we have a bill of materials we've ordered our materials let's go ahead and take the materials and create a kit of the model just cutting out all the balsa parts we'll cut out the parts and then we'll build them here's the detail of the rib notice i have the one quarter square square balsa leading edge and the notches are a little bit uh, smaller because i'm using quarter inch balsa a view of the plans is a very simple wing, a rectangular wing, nothing special. I've cut out the ribs and you can see the, the false ribs that go between the main ribs. You simply uh, trace over them on your balsa and they'll cut it out with a number 11 X-Acto knife. These are the ribs cut out, sanded into shape. You can see the main ribs and the half ribs and the, the pattern right there. Good view of laying out the leading edge, trailing edge, the notches for the trailing edge, and the ribs. Make sure they all fit in place, and we will glue them in place. Here are the ribs. Notice I put some cross members in there. Those are not on the plans. It'll help prevent warps in the main wing. I think the ribs are a little bit far apart. Notice I put the false ribs in here in front, as well as the cross ribs to prevent uh, warping. We're going to start thinking about joining the wing halves. They go like this. You'll have to trim as necessary for about one inch dihedral. Here's a sanding block that provides the necessary dihedral and it'll be glued in place with braces. I've completed the Pronto's wings. So let's go over what I've done, some changes I've made, and just for your information. So here's the wingspan, 48 inches, 24 inches each side. I have put in the false ribs that I described earlier just to help with the covering on the front. I put in these shear webs along here. Notice the balsa grain is vertical between the top and bottom spar. That helps a lot with strength and I did that on both sides. On the plans they have it between the spars, I think it's a little bit easier to put it on either side to get more area. The other thing I want to point out is a very important 1 16th inch plywood spar that I put front here for the main sp uh, spars top and bottom. I put it on back and I put the plywood here to join the two sections. I think this makes for a very strong joint between the two. It adds a little bit of weight but I think with the strength it, it's okay because I save some weight by not using the spars on the upper uh, by using spruce on the upper spars. 
Well, also notice I put in these cross members here. I thought there was a fair amount of distance here. The ribs were pretty far apart. I was concerned about the wing flexing with warp. So I put on the covering. This will help keep the wing very uh, stiff and it really doesn't add too much weight. I think if you do this at home, you can probably get away with not putting in these spars in the front. I think these false ribs will help out on that, but um, for, your, for your determination. I added a little shelf of balsa here, so I have room for the covering. I doubled this up. Also, I made these little trays or, or mounting items for the ailerons. One sixth inch ply across here, balsa for the covering, and then some holes on each rib, and this will go um, in a Y connector to connect to the receiver for the two ailerons. So not yet, not yet made the ailerons. That'll be 1 16th inch sheet. It'll be strip ailerons, the length of the wing. I'll double up the balsa where the control horn goes in for a little bit of strength. But I think the wing is by and large complete. Very strong wing, and this is what we'll go with for now. It's always a good idea, I highly recommend it, to check all your electronics and motor <clears throat> before you install them into the airplane. You may have a bad servo, the motor may run in the wrong direction, whatever. So let's just take a look at the electronics. Uh, this is the wing that you saw earlier with the two servos for the ailerons installed here and the uh, wiring comes up. This plugs into the receiver and port number two for the Spectrum AR620 receiver. So what we have for all the components, we have a battery. I intend to use a three, three cell LiPo for this. 1350 is the capacity, 25C thunder power. This is a <clears throat> Park 480 motor. This will be, this is one of the biggest motors I've had. It's just gonna provide tons of power. This is the Talon Castle 25 electronic speed control. Notice that you plug it into the um, motor like this. Very important, if these touch each other, it will short out. So I put shrink, um, heat shrink tubing to keep that from being electrical contact. Notice the colors are red to red, black to black, white to blue. The colors don't match too much. I usually start by matching up the red and black to make sure the motor rotates in the proper direction. If the motor rotates in the wrong direction, you simply reverse any two of the brushless wires and it will reverse the direction of the motor. <clears throat> There's a connection to the battery, uh, the receiver, and the, uh, the rudder and elevator servos. By the way, I use the Spectrum AR620 receivers in just about all my models. I love it because the antenna is built inside, just like with the Spectrum, in this case an older DX6, the, the antenna is just here. So what we'll do is we make sure the throttle is at idle. We will plug it in. Polarity is super important. Then we turn on the radio. When everything works, that light goes out, and here's a steady light in the receiver. So, elevator, rudder, underneath the aileron servos, and then the motor. I'll just carefully hold it in the back, give it a little bit of throttle. Nice and smooth, and it's rotating in the proper direction. So everything works out and um, that's good. And the next step will be building the fuselage. So the next step will be build the fuselage. I'll start that tomorrow. There's really nothing complicated on that. We'll go into more details. I studied a little bit. I may increase the length of the nose a half inch or so for center gravity purposes. I'm, I'm not sure that looks pretty good. And then we do that, the tail surfaces, and then put it all together and it's ready for covering. I have a separate video on how to bend the 1 8 inch music wire. The key thing is you have to use a vise and a wire bending jig. Again, the complete video is in the description and this shows how we bend the landing gear. Here it is at regular speed. See a little bit of uh, elbow grease. We just pull the 1 8 inch wire around the pin and it does just an excellent job of doing quality bends for the 1 8 inch music wire landing gear. So as we saw before, we have completed the wing construction. I'm very happy with that. If you decide to build this Pronto as your first plans built airplane, the more I work with this, it's a very simple model to build. I, I, I think you couldn't be any better position to succeed than building this Pronto. So let's move on to the fuselage. 
I've cut up the plans. This is the fuselage right here. It's a very normal thing. The tail surface is a solid ball, so we'll get to those at the end. What you need to do is there are formers here, F1, F2, F4. F3 is right here. That doesn't matter too much. These are 1 8 inch ply, and it's important to cut those out. And then you have to study a little bit how the fuselage is made up. It turns out that this is all flat balsa going back here and it's angled at the top and you can see that with the formers. This is the flat of balsa sides, the angles on the top. So what we need to do is understand that <clears throat> there's a 1 16th inch plywood plate on the bottom. The reason we need ply here, we need a lot of strength on the front to mount the landing gear. There's a 1 8th inch doubler here, so that's okay. Under here, it's 1 16th inch balsa, top and bottom. This lightweight, but that should be strong enough for the back. And also, by having the 1 16th inch balsa here, it'll provide additional strength because the motor is mounted onto the front. I did extend the front just a little bit to take into account a little bit forward um, movement for the center of gravity. The motor will be installed here. I can put the battery pretty much anywhere along here to get the right CG, but we won't know that until the model is built and covered. Notice some changes for electric power. We obviously do not need a fuel tank. Also for the motor, the firewall would be installed here and there are hard um, maple mounts that we don't need anymore. For the electric, what we need to do, what you need to do is to take your motor, put on the prop and spinner so you can figure out where the firewall location will be so you have clearance on the front of the fuselage. I, I literally put it against the plan like this. What that means is the firewall here is going to be located here and we mount the engine right to it. The cutout for the rear rotor and the screws to put it in. Notice also you have to cut out a little hatch here so that <clears throat> the wires can fit within here to go into the motor. And then the other two formers are like this. F2 goes right here and F4 goes here. I use a handsaw to cut out the interiors. We just drill holes with a coping saw. You just disconnect it here, put it through the hole, and you can cut out the interior. Pretty easy to do. Also, the landing gear, I've already bent that. There is a, another video that I'll put into the description. I'll put the link up now on how to use a wire bender to make this landing gear. <coughs> Keep running. This is the landing gear that I built. I'm very happy with it. It's absolutely straight. You can see it's absolutely flat <coughs> by lying, uh, by putting it onto the... But anyhow, the landing gear will go in the front like that, so that'll work out good. The wing cut out. So what you need to do for the fuselage is <clears throat> that very important side piece, and I just traced over here, and this is what the side looks like for the 1 8 inch balsa. It's a little bit thicker on the plans because of the gas-powered model. 1 8 inch balsa should be just fine for the electric-powered version. And here are the two sides right here. And notice that I've marked very carefully the formers so I can, uh, what I'll do when I put them together, I'll glue the form formers in place at a 90 degree angle with epoxy, put on the other side, and then we should go from there. The fuselage bends here to go to back, just put a little score line and we'll crack it and bend it there. I'll, I'll show you after I do that. So th that's the fuselage. And then what will happen is we'll need the two sides that will go up along here. On the other side, then the top, they're all located right here. The other thing that has to be done is the tail surfaces. Uh, the tail surfaces can be taken right off the plan. Uh, they had three 6 inch balsa, which is a little bit thicker than I think we need for the electric power version. I'm going to use 1 8 inch balsa. I think that should be okay. And then you just simply trace it onto <clears throat> 1 8 inch balsa. Uh, this is the fin and rudder. I may have to make it a little bit stronger in the bottom with plywood for the tail gear. We'll see. And here is the stabilizer and elevators. It'll be connected with a um, dowel to connect the two uh, there, and that is the, the tail surfaces. 
One thing <clears throat> that I have, to, have not done yet is I will put the hatch somewhere here on the side of the fuselage to put the battery in and out. <clears throat> That'll just, that shouldn't be hard to do. I'll get into more detail as I do that. It'll be hinged in the front. I'm going to use a rare earth magnet on a screw head to, to have it shut when it goes in. But we'll, we'll need to put the um, hatch in there for the battery access. So I'm happy with all the pieces of the fuselage. The next step will be to actually build the fuselage from there. Um, put in the front side firewall, just finish it up. It, it's coming along pretty quick. Here is the motor mounted onto the firewall. Always good to plan this out before you glue the firewall in place. Notice the hole for the aft shaft of the motor and the blind nuts with the bolts. It's a very good secure mount and we'll glue that to the side of the firewall. Here's former F2 glued in place. Notice that we use a um, angle to make sure that it's 90 degrees and I recommend 500 epoxy to make sure it's strong. And with uh, formers F2 and F4, being ones for the fuselage. The other side is glued in place and getting ready for the top. I have the basic fuselage built now, so I'd like to show that to you. So here's a fuselage. Pretty big plane, but a good long tail moment, and the nose I extended about half an inch to have a little bit more balance room. The firewall, I want to point out, is you make sure you cut a little opening for the wires to go through, for the three wires for the motor, and this is the end of the uh, motor. If you look, the, the little uh, shaft extends out. You have to have an opening for that. The other thing, because this is a fairly big motor, I don't want screws holding it in. If you look on the back of the firewall, I put blind nuts. And so that's a very normal thing to put in there. And um, just a touch of epoxy to keep the blind nuts in place. So you just simply screw in with bolts. So this is the firewall. Notice the 1 16th inch plywood on the base, which is good. And a doubler of 1 8th inch ply for the landing gear. This plywood on the bottom adds a lot of strength because the um, firewall is all glued to that with epoxy. The landing gear will go on like this when complete, so there's plenty of room for that. I think that'll work out about right. And then the rear former here, F4, and then 1 16th inch balsa on the bottom. So that was a good um, amount of work today. Fuselage has come along well. It won't continue with that tomorrow. Making good progress with the fuselage. So um, this is the stabilizer of the elevators. What I did was it lines up like so. I sanded all the edges around. And this is a real old school technique using a dowel to connect the elevator halves. Um, haven't used that in a while, but it works just fine. I epoxy that in. So that's a very solid connection between the elevator halves. And the idea behind that, the rudder can move freely side to side. So it's a pretty easy installation to do. So that's that. The other thing I did was I installed the servos. Okay, those are the um, elevator and rudder servos, just 1 16th inch plywood epoxied in, screw that in place. Tomorrow I will add the connections from here, the control rods to the back. I'm going to use the nye rods. That'll be very clear once I put that in. Once the nye rods are in place, I can then put the 1 16th, 1 16th inch balsa on the top. I want to make this completely open before. The other thing I'd like to point out is I have done the hatch, I think. So the fuselage here, this is the hinge point right here, a little holder from a popsicle stick. We just open it like that. There's a rare earth magnet located here, epoxied in. This is a metal screw and you can hear it kind of snap, sh click shut. And that is the shut. So you can see the bolt is in there with a little extension and it just simply hinges. And then when the magnet touches the bolt, it keeps it shut. So I think that'll be okay to show you how the hinge works. I haven't glued it in yet because I'm going to glue it after I cover it. This just pulls out. This is just a normal hinge for control surfaces. I put this cover on here. It looks like what you'd see on an airplane. Made a little opening, a slot here. And with epoxy, I'll glue that in place. The key thing is make sure you put some Vaseline in there so it doesn't glue the hinge. And that should be a nice little um, easy to use hinge setup. And of course, I want to make sure it's big enough for the battery. Here's my three cell, and I'll be able to put the battery like this, and there's plenty of room um, in the fuselage for the battery. Work continues on the um, fuselage. The ply plate for the bottom is in place. Notice a 1 8 inch ply doubler for the landing gear necessary to strengthen that up. 
We've put the plastic knife rods in place to go from the uh, elevator and rudder servo to the back. Very easy way to connect the servos to the control surfaces. This is the tail wheel uh, ready for the rudder. And here's a rudder. Note the plywood bracing on the bottom. And we'll show you a little hole that goes in. That's what the tiller of the rudder goes into. Here's the underside of the fuselage. You can see that the um, nylon uh, straps are in place for to hold the landing gear. Again, just a very uh, normal way to construct this. And here's the tail wheel uh, glued into place. Top part of the fuselage front is mounted. We have to trim to fit that in. Here the side pieces are in place and just need a little bit of um, light sanding to get that pretty square. This is the beginning of the uh, headrest. You can see you put two um, quarter inch balls on top, then X-Acto knife to sand it to shape. I'm just about done with the construction for the, um, for the frame, the wing and the fuselage tail surfaces. So I want to just talk about that for a second. So here's the fuselage so far. What I'm going to do late in, in just in a moment here, you'll see the motor is installed with one screw and I've put on the um, landing gear, just kind of tacked it in because what I want to do is get an idea of where the center of gravity is on this model, uh, just because the battery placement is going to determine that. Originally, I thought it was going to be tail heavy. As I add the covering, the covering on the tail will add a little bit of tail weight. But it turns out the battery is located right about here for the proper center of gravity. But I'll, I'll show that in a second. Here also on the other side is the hatch. It's not yet glued in place, but the battery is in there. And what I did was I created this little shelf. And the battery is here for now with Velcro. And you'll see that. that uh, it's about the center of gravity location for it, the servos, and then the nye rods for the tails. The um, tail wheel is installed here. This is the rudder. I put some plywood on either side to make that very strong with a hole right here. What will happen is this uh, tiller arm goes inside there. The rudder goes on place and the rudder can steer back and forth. So that is all set to be installed and eventually covered. I've made ailerons for the wings. They're fairly small ailerons, but they're long ailerons. I'm not going to be doing too many acrobatics, I don't think. So this should be okay. We'll find out. Remember, the model is a three-channel model. There's no ailerons in the plans. You have to, you have to uh, do those on your own. And what I did on the ends is I add a little bit of a doubler of the 1 16th inch so that's a little bit stronger for the control horn. And the same thing I recommend for the elevator. I put a doubler of the 1 16th inch balsa to install the control horn so that's just a little bit stronger. The, uh, the, the headrest is just um, carved out of a soft balsa that's glued in place. I'll put some filler around here sand it then I think everything will be ready to cover here shortly. So let me now put on the wing and I'll show you about where the center of gravity is. So the wing is rubber banded in place and it's really actually pretty straight. I took all the tail surfaces, the stab, elevator, fin and rudder, just taped it onto the back for an approximation. The motor's installed, the battery's in here, the balance point, the center of gravity is right by the spar and you can see it balances pretty well right there. The wheels are very light, they shouldn't change too much. So that's close enough. I'll be able to achieve the center of gravity by shifting the battery fore and aft. I'm not worried about that. So that's where we are on the airplane. I'm happy with it so far. Oh, the other thing is um, I weighed everything with the battery in here. It's coming out at one pound, five ounces so far. So the covering had a little bit. My target was to be less than a, a pound and a half, which would be uh, one pound, eight ounces. I think we'll hit that easily. The weight on the plans for the original the gas engine was two and a half pounds, so this will be considerably lighter than the original. It'll just fly better. So uh, next step is to uh, do some final sanding and um, glue the tail surface in place. I think I'll do that before I cover, and then we'll cover the model with iron-on covering. Here is the uh, Elmer's uh, filler, wood filler, put in on the joints. Uh, just let that dry and sand it. It helps make everything smooth. Uh, here it is after sanding, just uh, much smoother on the joints for the wood joints on the fuselage. 
On the covering, we start with the underside of the wing first. That way we cover the bottom. We can put in the servos, which we have done here. Then we can flip the wing over. The top is uncovered, but we have the um, aileron servo wires in place that we can cover the top and put on the ailerons with the wires through the holes ready for the uh, to connect to the Y connector. Tail surfaces beginning their covering. This is the fuselage with the blue iron-on covering. Really nothing special. Just take it a step at a time as you put in your pieces. And here's the finished fuselage with the iron-on covering. Take a look at the uh, wing. Notice that we add some popsicle stick hardwood on the rubber bands to make sure the rubber bands don't chew away at the balsa for the wing. And there the popsicle stick um, reinforcers are in place. Time now to look at the um, decals. I'm choosing a P26 uh, scheme, adapting it to the Pronto. Yeah, there are the decals. And again, the rudder, we cover it with red, add the white trim monocoat, and then the blue. I have to report that I am done with the uh, Pronto, so let's take a look at the fuselage. Now here it is right here with the decals in place. Um, I elected to use a little bit larger wheels, a little bit heavier, but I think they look better on the airplane. You can take a look at the landing gear. It's installed with the nylon hold-down straps, 1 8 inch. Here's the um, interior with the a receiver. This is a battery tray. Because of center gravity, the battery has to be right at the center of gravity. These are the servos with the nye rods that go back to the tail, just a standard installation there. Also, this is the safe start that is safety thing for the um, electric prop. When I plug in the battery, I can demonstrate that to you. And this is the hatch, goes in. You can see the little bat, uh, magnet, a uh, rare earth magnet there, and it holds in very well. So that's the hatch with the um, hinge epoxy in place. The total weight of the model came out at one pound eight ounces, uh, one pound 12 ounces. I was shooting for one pound eight ounces, came a little bit over, but that's okay. The weight on the plans of the gas powered model, as I mentioned earlier, was two and a half pounds. So I think this will be okay. So uh, this is the fuselage right here. Now let's take a look at the wing. Again, very standard on the wing. These are the two aileron connectors. The one thing I did do is I chickened out on the ailerons. The first ailerons were these right here. They were three quarters of an inch wide. I just took a guess at that. When I put those in place, they just didn't seem big enough. So I changed it to a one inch aileron. There's no scientific aerodynamical analysis. That just looks a little bit better. I'm sure it would have flown to the smaller ailerons, but those give you a little bit more control at uh, lower air speeds. In other words, takeoff. Uh, these are the servos and the installation to the control horns. Also, I want to point out the popsicle sticks that I glued in place here. This is where the rubber bands go. You don't want them digging into the bolts, so that's just to protect the wing where it goes on. So give you a moment. Let me um, hook up the uh, wing and the battery. We'll take a look at the controls, the engine power, and then we'll, we'll go on from there. I have installed the wing with two rubber bands just for the demonstration. I think it's a good looking airplane. I, I think it's got nice lines. I, I like it. It's just um, a cute little airplane. So let me talk about the safe start. We'll look at the control surfaces and I want to give you a little talk about center gravity, what I went through with the hatch and all that stuff. Again, just things you'll have to think about when you build from plants. There's elevator up and down, rudder left and right. And then the ailerons are shown right there. We're here at the field for our test flight. It's just a absolutely perfect day here and we're at the end of April 2022. So here is the uh, Pronto. It's all set up. Put in the battery. Do the last few minute checks. I think everything will be okay. If I can get it up in the air and back of the ground in one piece, I'll have a good test flight. Let's give it a shot. This is the no kidding maiden flight of the um, Pronto and it just had tons of power, plenty of lift and it just lifted right off. I knew the minute I lifted, uh, lifted off it just felt right, good control, no trim, um, turned well, just a very honest flying airplane. Uh, slowed down for the camera a little bit and you'll see coming up on the landings it just handled well. So this is the first flight. We'll eventually come up with a landing then shortly after that will be the second flight where I just take off and circle around the field.
All right, so you just saw the, the mid flight. That was no kidding, first flight. I, I didn't put in an ounce of trim uh, with a lighter weight. It's got plenty of lift of the wings. Um, it's got plenty of control authority with the ailerons and uh, elevators just about right. Tons of power. I could have put in a motor half this size. So if I do another one, I'll, um, I'll work on that. I think I like having the large wheels and um, that. So you just, you just have to keep that in mind, but it just, it flew great. I think part of the reason was with this fairly large wing, we saved about a pound of weight from the gas version. You could slow down and it just, you can see how slow it flies and, and it, it just, it just flew well. So very happy about that. If you decide to make the Pronto from the plans, I think you'll have a great flying airplane. I, this, it was, it was a great airplane. Good luck on your build.